Welcome to the Kumble Corner. I am Super Joshi, joined by Karan Mehta in Texas. And uh, our homies, Knuckle Bande and Ridankar, couldn't be here today, but send their apologies, probably. Uh, although Knuckle, to be fair, has been sending us some great stories, so um, <laughs> pick up his chest. Um, don't forget, if you like this show, hit subscribe um, wherever you're, you're hearing it, or on YouTube, or hit follow. Wherever you are watching this, listening to this, use the appropriate follow slash subscribe mechanism. And also go on uh, social media and search Kumble Corner, both with K's, just to, um, yeah, double K's, um, just to stay on top and in touch with us. So in today's episode, we are going to be talking about... <laughs> yeah, get on Twitter to make sure you can stay on top of us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm not typically good on top, so yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, let's just say you can stay amongst the tweets. Um, um, well, X, go and give it to you. Because <laughs> it's X now. Um, right. T- today's episode. Uh, it's probably like one of the few places where like, I think rap culture and cricket will combine. Um, and maybe India generally, actually. Um, right. So let's talk about what's happening today. Uh, we are going to be uh, touching on Rishi Pant's knees um, and his careless whispers. <laughs> Foreshadowed by Rohit Sharma, um, and also his 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 uh, his auction. His how much am I worth? Is he is he feeling some kind of uh, self value crisis? I don't know. Um, we'll be talking about the women's team losing in the World t- uh, Cricket Twenty Twenty. Is that that's what it's called now? Um, should the BCCI just disband? We we touched on that last week as well. Um, we'll be talking also about New Zealand series. Uh, and uh, might as well talk about Bangladesh because their coach slapped someone, which is always funny. Um, and finally, happy birthday to Baba Azam, who's been um, dropped, uh, but is actually a great player. Um, as much as we don't want to see him doing too well, it's also, for the as cricket lovers, we want to see good players playing and not necessarily having a massive slump of form. And, and like, uh, who doesn't like having a couple of days off on your birthday? So it could, yeah, it could have been an end-all, be-all win for him. Yeah, he could have been batting in Muthang. So. Yeah. Oh, he probably wouldn't have been batting long. <laughs> well, yes, there is that. Those guys did they did they just use the same pitch? They were like, you know what, yeah. buy one, get one free. Yeah. The funniest <laughs> thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> like, let's let's just use that one. We've already we've already paid for it. Huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's reusing the birthday supplies. Yeah, for Madam. Classic. Why not? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Especially because the why. The whole discourse is how bad that pitch was and how badly Pakistan played on it. They're like, yep, let's run that shit back. Yeah. Well, they were hoping, I guess, that having played on it so much, they might finally get a wear and tear. It's like a day day 10 pitch. Um, I think it's also so... like an ego thing. <laughs> like, no, we, we deserve to win that match. We will win on this goddamn pitch, whether he's like it or not. Yeah. And, and, and Punjabi's... probably won't. Punjabis are, uh, I think, quite heavily into the administration. That's always the the shall we say the claim by Sindhis and Balochis, etc. So um <laughs> yeah, Multan being in Punjab I, I yeah as a Punjabi I can say this. We would do that, absolutely. Do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's efficient. yeah, also yeah, also efficient. Um right, shall we start off with uh our boy Rishabh Pant um and him just letting it slip. Um and I feel my inner uncle coming out now. It's like Sonny, what are you talking about? why, <laughs> why are you saying this? Mubandgan, you know? It's, yeah. It's, so for those who don't know, um, Rohit Sharma touched on this in, in, in his uh, appearance on the Kapil Sharma show, where he said, uh, I looked over, but Rishabh Pant used his brains. I, I'm, a, I'm kind of uh, paraphrasing from the Hindi. Um, but he goes, I looked over and Rishabh Pant is lying on the floor signaling, signaling to the physio. So clearly it wasn't like planned. It's not like what England did in that 2020 or anything else. Um, but yeah, so the physio is there, and, and I thought, all right, you know, maybe Rocham is just saying this. Maybe it's just a bit of editing. But apparently, Rishabh Pant has now come out and said, uh, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." Um, I told him to take his time. Nothing's wrong. Take your time with the strapping. We need to slow the game down to get class and out, which is what Rocham was alluding to. And I'm like, there's one thing doing it, right? And all, at the time, I had a lot of sympathy for him because I was like, look, at the end of the day, the dude's playing a final. He's what a year and a half um, after a, a mad like accident where he was very seriously injured right um close to death so 
I have a lot of sympathy for a guy who has to bat and squat. Like, wicket keeping is hard at the be best of times. If you've been through a serious injury, back, knees, whatever, then keeping is going to be hard, yeah, especially in pressure. So I had sympathy for him. I thought, all right, maybe he's not totally injured, but he's being precautious. You were using precaution. Cool. Turns out he's just a lafunga who's just, who's just trying it. Um, <laughs> call it gamesmanship, call it what you want. Um, if I was South Africa, I'd be pretty pissed off right now. Um, at the same time, you can say that Klassen maybe should be able to handle it. He's a big boy. He uh, he, he, he can talk stuff. Oh, where do you stand on this? Um, well, I loved it at the time because... <laughs> <I did. laughs> <laughs> well, I would have died. That's the very next ball is an out. He absolutely yeah. nailed the timing. It was and perfectly executed. And on top of that, I just like having players that are cerebral and have that foresight. I mean, um, I don't remember who did it. And he did it sort of to the point where you couldn't tell. Like, you initially felt sympathy for him because of what he went through. Because when Afghanistan did it in the World Cup final, it was the funniest thing that I think I've <laughs> seen in cricket. Oh, was it Gulam Nabi or someone? I think yeah. something like that. So. Yeah. And it was still an old... <laughs> And it ended up being in a losing effort, which makes it that much funnier. And ours probably turned around the result for the most significant India match in the last, what, decade? Uh, yeah, since 2013. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, and it's one of those things where I can, if it happened against India, I'd be pissed. I would want him in jail, <laughs> fine, knee cut off if he's actually in that much pain. Um, so I'm cognizant of the discourse of frustration. That being said, not my circus, not my monkeys, we won. Um, so it was worth it. And it, it's a part of sports where it's not cheating. It's just sort of utilizing the loopholes. Um, and to our advantage, uh, you see it happen in soccer, what, 10, 12 times a match? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I – and just because it's accepted there doesn't mean like – Cricket needs to act like it's the worst crime that's ever been committed, which cricket does have a gatekeeping mentality, basically, through and through. Um, so it's one of those damned if you do, and we would have lost if we didn't, I think. Because mm -hmm. slowing down the game did was integral in that in that section of the time. I think they needed, like, 30 off 27 or something real lackluster after that point with, like, seven wickets in hand. Um, so... Yeah, it's one of those situations where I'd hate it against India. I love it for India. Uh, I can understand why people would be mad. But it is, like you alluded to in the beginning, it's why Why would you say it? No one needed to say it. Even if it, that's something that you can keep inside the locker room, everyone can laugh about it. Good chuckle. Maybe write it in your book in 15, 20 years that that's what you did. Um, even if Rohit just alluded to it, you get the hint. It's funny. We won. It's enough in the past. You'd hope South Africa sort of moved on from it. Um, but Rishabh doubling down has to hurt. That's, that's a bit of a twist of the knife there. Barely three months on as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're still in the kind of... You're still in the, in the morning period at this point. I mean, I'm still not over last year's debacle. I'm not over uh, 2011. Or 20, yeah, 20, yeah, last year. 2011. 2022. 23. Yeah, we won it in 2011. <laughs> yeah, 2011. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm not yeah. over 2011 either. <laughs> I was in Delhi. I was in Delhi, and actually, do you know what? I was in India from the quarterfinals onwards. Oh, and I'm going to go. I'm going to go into a little story here. And it happened to be just purely like uh, what's the word? Serendipitous. Like we, it wasn't that I went to see any of the games. So I've landed in Delhi. I'm on my way to a job on a train, and um, the quarterfinals going on, and this uncle, like maybe four rows in front of me, has called mm -hmm. his son up um, at home uh, because I mean. As much as it wasn't that long ago, it still was a slightly different world ago. And he's uh, he's calling his son. He's speaking to his son. Yeah, how are you doing, Beta? Is this all Punjabi? Going, um, you know, how was your exam? Okay, you're gonna make me proud. Yeah, and the kids, kids, obviously on the side, side going, yes, Papa, yes, Papa, yes, Papa. He goes, okay, cool. He goes, uh, but what's the score? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, we're going to win. <laughs> so the, all that preamble about the kids' exams, he didn't care. He didn't care. No, Take no. a hit, Mridankar. But um, anyway, yeah. Um, and then, I took yeah, off the school to watch. Fair whole, enough. Yeah, last three and months. Then, and my and school administration knew about it. When we'd call in to say sick, like my mom would be like, hey, Connor's going to be sick today. The principal's like, oh, India's still in the World Cup. And so <laughs> they knew, we knew. It was just an unspoken rule that I'd get an excused absence for India's World Cup matches. I think in, in this day and age, you could probably file that under mental health. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, probably a week after that. Um, yeah, you get away with it. Um, would you say that, I mean, to play devil's advocate, I, like, I, I am slightly uneasy with, I'm not slightly more than but uneasy with him announcing it. And it just, it feels a little bit dirty um, that that's happened. But um, at the same time, is there an argument that it's just like sledging that um, it's the same when <coughs> when batsmen have, when fielders have a word with the batsman or the other way around, actually, with the bowlers, um, that the uh, batsman should be able to shake it off and or use it as inspiration or, you know, use it as fuel, like your brush did with the six sixes based on what, what Freddie said to him. Or when, what's that piece of shit? Stuart Broad would uh, uh, move the bales can, around. Can I just say... <laughs> Hmm. I know his wife professionally, and she's a really lovely person. So I More taste than mine. <laughs> no, she's she's really lovely, and like it's just if she ever sees this, just sees me being a party to you slagging off her husband. Oh, oh yeah, she, she's got poor taste. What do you want me to do about that? You can't buy class. <laughs> God. No, we've been through this as well before um, on the old one about how when I and I remember your face but when I said he's he he's like uh, England's Virat when I said you know as much as people hate him on the pitch. Off the field, he comes off across very nice and very self-deprecating, and and and, and you know, basically like a, a fairly nice guy from what I'd seen on Sky. Yeah, yeah sure, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> Although I've also never told you this story, but um, she was quite surprised that I knew, because she said, "Yeah, yeah I'm, I was working with her, and she said, yeah, I'm going to see, um, you know, uh, Stuart's parents, and we're gonna we're gonna ah, tell them gross. tell them about the baby." And I said. Um, because they were having a baby, right? She's like, "Yeah, we're, we're gonna we're gonna tell them about uh, the sex of the baby." And I said, "Ah," oh. and I mentioned, "Yeah, oh, um, I called him Chris." Like I mentioned Chris Broad, and she was like, really freaked out that I knew his name. And I was like, "What? Yeah. Why would you not know? Why would you not know Stuart Stewart's dad's name?" Yeah. He controls the weather and every outcome when he's a third umpire. Of course, everyone. Knows. <laughs> oh yeah, I was also because I know Curran. That's why I know Chris. Broad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's yeah, that's not gonna do me well. Surely they've got a restraining order with my name on it. They're just waiting to sign it. Yeah, as soon as you step out of Heathrow, um, <laughs> yeah. I'll be there soon enough. I'll be there not. I'll be there. I'll be there next summer. Did you ever see Stuart Broad on on uh, the Great Cricket Team? Uh, no, I watched a video of him like bowling against him in the nets. No, it was hilarious because he's got on their podcast and, and they're like, "Why are you here?" And he's like, "They made me do it because <laughs> he had to sell his book." Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was quite well, funny. I, my question would be for the Great Cricket: Why do they have that guy on there? Well, it's, it's one of those. Uh, it's one of those things. I mean, I mean, I'm sure if Stuart Broad wanted to come on this podcast, you would happily. He wouldn't have the balls. He yeah. wouldn't have the courage. But, but you, 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 you would love to bowl him some bounces. You'd be like, "Come on, Stuart, it's chin music," as in metaphorical bounces with your yeah. questions. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'd bowl real bounces at him if I could too. Well, yeah, I'm sure you would. I'm sure you would. Yeah. But he's like six foot six. I, I don't know how tall you are, but um, I mean, <laughs> not six foot ladder. six. And I don't know <laughs> if my if my seventy kilometer per ball pace is really going to get up there. But if it did, I'd be going for the face. Right. <laughs> so I'm sure you... Well, it wouldn't be chin music otherwise. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but you know, I, I, I mean, we will talk about that story in particular, but I think Freddie was the one giving uh, Yuvraj more, attitude, more like, mouth than Broad. I think Broad actually probably just caught a raw deal there. Uh, yeah, and I do think, though, in all seriousness, if Clausen survives that next delivery, I don't think this is as big of an ordeal. It just happened to be the very next ball that he got out on. If he was able to capitalize on and just leave that ball, because I'm pretty sure it was like 15th stump wide out there, and he just sort of slashed at it. Um, if he leaves that, this is a no-nothing se- story, and we probably end up losing that match. Um, but when, when something like that just works out as well as it does, I don't think Rishab could have imagined it working out any better. Um, it's a fun story for from our perspective. But yeah, it is, it is cheeky to mention it so affirmatively, so soon after the result. Did you say cheeky or cheaty? I don't know. Uh, both. Both can apply. <laughs> <laughs> both can apply. But I didn't say it. Me neither. I was just uh, quoting what I may have Allegedly. Heard. Allegedly. Although I kind of... Oh, look, it's, it's okay. They Last time India toured there, they did have one country against 11 people. So it's, maybe it's just a bit of... <laughs> what do you mean? A, a bit of... A bit of uh, Payback, should we say? Uh, he's he also has been tweeting, hasn't he, about uh, the IPL auction? Like, every the IPL is already on the agenda. It's like what six months away? Yeah, it's, it's October now. It's coming in March. We've already spoken about Ricky Ponting joining Punjab, talking about winning, 
like like that that's really something that happens at Kings Eleven. Um, <laughs> there's other stuff going on. Uh, talk about Rohit, obviously potentially leaving Mumbai Indians, maybe maybe not. Um, and now Bunt, he, he's wondering how much he's worth on the uh, at the auction. Is that is that what the tweet was? Yep, yep. It seemed just the classic. I'm laying in bed, had just two drinks too many. And you're just sort of in that mental spiral where you question everything about your existence, what you're worth, what you've done, if you've done enough, if you'll ever be successful. So it was, it was one of the more relatable things that Rishabh's tweeted. Um, and I was thinking about it, though. If you were to do like a blind resume, because he's, he's worth his weight in gold in advertising and sort of the marketing that comes with it. So his performance isn't necessarily um, correlating with how much value he brings to a franchise. But I do think mm-hmm. if you're doing a blind resume, I, I don't think he's going to be worth as much as one would think just based off his raw hitting power. Because 2020 is just not his jam, which is kind of ironic um, given the way he plays test cricket. But yeah, it was it's a funny tweet. It's just one of those things where you wake up to, it's on your feed. You have, um, you don't necessarily expect it. It's funny. It's, it's Rishabh. Um, like, if this came from Virat, I would be having an existential crisis if he started questioning what he's worth. Uh, yeah, he's not as cheeky in that sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's, <laughs> he's wife more, and kid. He's uh, more Australian. No, but I guess Rishabh has got that because he's known for wisecracks in the uh, and making his slipcord and laugh and just all that kind of stuff. And he and makes everything. Yeah. yeah. Great tweet, great guy. Great knees. Absolute winner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think his World Cup winner as well, I suppose we could say. Um, fair enough. And I think your, your football comparison is, is an apt one. Um, talking football comparisons, we've referred to Bangladesh as Tottenham Wire particularly. And it seems that uh, they've suspended their coach, Hathra Singer, um, just shortly after losing in India. I mean, which is, I know they, they won in Pakistan, um, but they can't be expected to come to India and then win as well. It's not like this is not. So a Disney movie, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and he's been apparently, it's not to do with him, um, any of the coaching performance. Apparently, he slapped someone. <laughs> and it's yeah. taken them a couple of years to, to realize he slapped someone. I think now they've suddenly decided that enough this is enough. Cool behavior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, but they have slapped, they, you slapped someone. Oh, and we forgot you're Sri Lankan. Um, so you must go. Allegedly. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, like you said, it's, it's it's just a brown uncle thing. I think <laughs> yeah. if they aren't wearing, if they aren't wearing, if they aren't in the locker rooms or wearing like Bangladeshi cricket gear and this happens just out and about, no one bats an eye at it. And if, like you said, if Bangladesh beats India, he's not fired. That slap doesn't matter. Um, no, the whole coaching staff will be slapping players left, right and center. Yeah, exactly. So uh, yeah, I, this is, this is what works. The motivation. It's one of those like classic and you see it in American sports happen pretty often. Um, where a team has made their bed contractually, and so then they'll start leaking to the media different stories or issues that would lead to like um, like proper termination or, or with cause, um, which seems could be what Bangladesh is trying to do here. But there's a lot of cricket boards when you boil down to it that just have so much wrong with it. Um, and I, I'd, I'd put Bangladeshi cricket board in that in that vicinity. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think Real, Real Madrid were, were famous for apparently doing some of the stuff like that as well. I think it, well, it might be that just certain players said no. We, we, Real Madrid are trying this on me to get me out. But so I think yeah, the, just, the sun's talking, just coming this way. So maybe I'm looking like a bit of a blur. I don't know. No, you look glowing. Um, <laughs> Thanks. It's like if Shakib Al Hassan was on there and he got slapped. Without knowing the context, I'd probably decide with the coach because that guy's annoying as a motherfucker. Um, so, I really, I think con- contextually, it matters. Uh, you, you probably can't get physical with any of your players in any level, in any capacity. Um, but again, if it's anything like Shakib, then there's a decent chance that he kind of had what was coming for him because he's fucking, he's so obnoxious. Um, so, yeah, story matters, context matters. All in all, again, from outsider looking in, it's funny. They'll they'll blow it up, find a new coach, beat Pakistan again, lose to India, rinse, repeat, recycle. And that's the one thing we can all hope for. 
the hilarity of it all continues. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you've talked about boards. Uh, Indian women's team are out of the World Cup, um, the group stage. Uh, they came close against Australia, but but they didn't do it. Um, they lost against New Zealand as well, beat Sri Lanka, beat Pakistan, um, bullied their neighbours, lost against the centre countries. Should the BCCI just give up? Should we just close the BCCI down now? Because they've not... I mean, how many times has it been now, the women? They've just not been able to do it. Yeah, th and this one is particularly bad. It wasn't... It w they weren't fun watches. Um, there wasn't a real sense of confidence their tactics and their planning seem to be a bit all over the place. Really rash decision making when losing quick wickets, um, and just overall game intent was bad. I forgot which match it was, but when we needed to score quickly, I don't think we had a a boundary in the power play, which in our T20 mm -hmm. is just a death wish. You might as well um, lose the match there. And tosses weren't necessarily in our favor for that last match, um, nor against Australia, but. I, I forgot what it was. I think since we got the new coach, uh, Amol, last year, we've played six different number threes. And twice during this um, tournament, we shuffled up the top order after quick wickets, which put um, Rodriguez out of place, which made Humpy play a game that she's not necessarily great at. Um, but she had, a, she had a lackluster tournament in general, I think, outside of the 50 against Sri Lanka. I don't think she hit double digits. Um, poor running. There was that one match where she was batting with a tail ender. I don't remember who she was batting with. And she just took two untimely singles. We needed 13 off nine. And we lost two and two right after that single. Um, it was just, it was a bizarre performance because even at their best, they never looked like a World Cup uh, winning team here. It was like, yeah. it's like that classic question. Can you close your eyes and imagine the confetti falling on them? And at no point did they give you a performance inspiring enough to believe it. Um, so something's got to change. I think it has to be a little bit of complacency and not to win the whole thing because Australia is Australia. But I think the board, the players, and probably the fans assumed a semifinal berth. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. from there, so on, uh, let the chips fall where they may. But that, that took over. Uh, batting first obviously helps in every situation, but yeah, it was uninspiring. I think it's probably the best word I would use to describe this this um, campaign. Yeah, I think we'd I think we'd have taken a, a semi knockout. Um, just we kind of know how good the, the, the teams are. Um, yeah. You know, even as fans, we, we as much as we dream and we hope, we we are aware of reality sometimes. But yeah, um, we also got to get a cricket out of the UAE. This was the most unanticipated, unhyped World Cup that I can remember, even on the women's side. There was just, it didn't seem like there was a lot of fanfare. I didn't see a lot of engagement interactions on Twitter. There was a handful of like memorable moments thus far, but it hasn't been like riveting run chases, um, high totals, or just selling stellar bowler figure, bowling figures. There's been, I think... It's like the second most amount of drops in a women's World Cup, and they haven't even reached the knockout stages yet. Even Australia were dropping. Uh, yeah, the day, I think Pakistan I was, I was like, dropped. What's going on here? Yeah, Pakistan dropped seven or eight, I think, versus New Zealand. Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess it's was, was Cameron Akmal playing? I didn't realize. Yeah. That. God, man, he was one of my favorite cricketers. I loved him. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, lackluster performance by India. Something's got to change. I don't know if it's coaching, but. They just seemed to have no direction. It was just send out whoever, like, makes sense. It's like sort of like fantasy football. It's like tinkered at the last second, hoped for the best, and then didn't really have backup plans or um, a proper, I think, layout on how they wanted to approach matches in different situations, batting or bowling first. Yeah. I mean, I guess the the, the sad thing is, or, or, or most difficult thing about Sunday's game against Australia was, it was winnable. It's not like they got absolutely thrashed. I mean, like, like New Zealand, it's like, fair enough. You know, if Australia thrashed you, cool. But you were in with a shout. Um, a couple of a couple of less leg side balls when, you, when you're bowling and, and maybe just a few more hits. A couple. It was literally, what, two hits away on you. You did 10 runs short or something like that. Yeah. And actually, it was a winnable game. It wasn't one of those where New Zealand, um, that, that you had to be, you know, re relying on, on Pakistan to get your result. 
at that point, whenever it's out of your hands, it's it's, it's always a 50 50 at that point is you're never in control. So, yeah. um, you know, obviously by the nature of it, uh, Pakistan got slammed really, to be honest. Um, and I know the fans will be loving it, but um, I, I mean, I know we slightly disagree on this, but I think that the, the players are obviously professionals, in my opinion, and they wouldn't have, have given the game away in that regard. Um, I don't think they would want that level of busy. Um, yeah, you're, for all intents and purposes, right. Um, I'm just waiting for you to say, but that's bullshit. <laughs> yeah, but like 56 is a shockingly low amount. Uh, hey, we got out for 36 in, in Australia. So. No, we didn't. Um, and, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, no, we didn't, yeah. It's just, yeah that didn't fucking, exist. What are you, that fucking Sri Lankan Daniel Cricket 86 or whatever, that fucking guy? Uh, <laughs> Daniel, really, what's uh, his name? Daniel, Daniel hey, Alexander. Daniel 86 or some shit like that. He's the, he's the worst. Um, he's, he gets it. He gets so much abuse the other way when when, when India win because he, he just loves he loves like just having a pop for no reason. Like It makes no it, sense. And it makes no sense. He's like... Bubber scored 13 off six, three six, a testament to India's 36 all out in Adelaide. How the fuck do you even connect? That's like, um, what's that guy on our ads for the last 30 years? Prem Jotish. He just like uses numerology to point out random flaws against India's score. You, you know what it is, right? It's just agenda. It's, and you, you see it with, oh, look, political politics of all spectrum, really. Um, uh, and, and any kind of journalist will do this as well. That they, they will just essentially find some kind of factor with some kind of event and just shoehorn their own narrative into it just yes. to kind of um, a reason uh, everything is an example of i don't know corruption or uh, yeah, yeah anything that, that, those two are kind of funny um but yeah I, I mean obviously i don't think pakistan rigged it but would it be that surprising would I put it back? Like, if India was in a situation where they were already through and if they just got blown out, Pakistan would also be eliminated. Would it surprise anyone if India got blown out there? Uh, they didn't turn up knowing they were already out, you mean? Yeah, if India was if India was already shooting, guaranteed a spot in the semifinals, and then they had to lose by less than 80 runs to Australia, or Pakistan would make it through, it wouldn't surprise me to see India lose by 81. In that circumstance. And I know it's not obviously going to, it's not factual, but it was just one of those scores that like stick out to you. Like how, like, how are you guys playing the same sport? Um, so you yeah, it, it, it could just happen. But what I mean, I guess the, the point we're making is to our listeners is we're not, what we're not saying is that Pakistan threw the game for money or bribery or, or just anything else. Pride. Oh, I don't even think about for bribery. I was thought it was pride. It's like, all right, if we can't make it, yeah. neither can our big brother. Yeah. Um, yeah, because we, 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 there isn't any history really of, of um, that kind of stuff in Pakistan in the women's game. I mean, um, <laughs> yeah. uh, they blew they, uh, they pulled a shocking amount of no balls. <laughs> I'm joking. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think India bowled a few no yeah. balls and wides as well uh, in a winning course. That was weird. Uh, no, uh, but, uh, what do you make of the leg side line? They kept they kept persisting with it. Um, India, uh, it, it made no sense. Yeah, uh, yeah. You gotta put what a leg gully and a leg slip at that point if you're gonna be that incessant on bowling the line. And it didn't really seem like we adapted. Uh, it was, and that's that's not like a wicked taking ball. That's a bullet here. It's gonna be hard to score runs on. And if they miss it, it we could get a wicket. Um, Except and, they were still scoring off them. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like it, it. Yeah, I guess that's true. But it's not as like the easiest ball to put away every single time. That sure. that finally. Um, so yeah, it, you, it, you're playing against a number eight or something who would be in top three in any other team. Yeah, it was just it was very timid, and we it didn't seem throughout this tournament that we ever took a match to the opponent. We let the match come to us and did what we could to win the time that we won, um, the times that we won. But it it all like I said though from the game from the match that I saw and how much I watched bowling and batting, they never seem to have a really clear, concrete plan on how they're going to go about it. And sometimes it's good to adapt on the fly, but a semblance of a platform on how you want to approach it uh, could have gone a long way. And beating Australia and does not getting mollywopped by New Zealand. No. No, no, no. 
Well, uh, there you have it. Uh, Indies women played like Bangladesh's men. Um, Luckily, we can avenge New Zealand. The men can. The men, the men yeah. Uh, yeah, New Zealand are in a bit of a... Uh, should we say that they're, they're under a bit of a cloud at the moment? Um, but, and I didn't mean this, I'm, I'm such an amazing poet, um, but there seem to be quite a few clouds on the horizon <laughs> for, for the... Um, for the forthcoming match in, in, in Bangalore, uh, or Bengaluru on the Jinnaswami. Um, apparently, it's going to rain all five days, which is going to make it a bit difficult, I think, to win. Um, and you can't even do really what you did against Bangladesh in terms of it's rained for a couple of days, it's dry now, let's try and hammer out a result. Because if it's stop start and there's then the moisture is variable, it's just a bit a bit different. But we um, Kane Williamson's not playing, um, Latham is captain. Someone else has just been ruled out. Was his, his name's gone? Sears, I think. Um, they got a new Duffy. Yeah. Uh, this podcast, although we were recording it um, on Tuesday, uh, by the time it comes out, I believe the, the match would have started. So um, I guess, look, what, what are you kind of hoping for for, for uh, this series apart from a 3 0 win? 3 uh, 0 win, and then. Just steadfast batting. The bowling doesn't concern me. It is just... If our batting lineup all hit in song, no one can beat us, I don't think, in the world in test match. But we just haven't had proper opening to a solid top order to um, a manageable middle order. It's either the middle order carries us and the top order collapsed, or the top order did well and then we'll lose three and five or something like that. So I would like to see it in song. And I think... uh, if Shubnam doesn't play, it's the perfect opportunity for Sarfraz to sort of put his name in the forefront of our selectors despite already being there, but taken more seriously that if players don't perform, it's not like injury going to be bringing Sarfraz. He could just take someone's spot if it comes down to it. So if Sarfraz is hitting through, uh, what would he probably open? If Gil's gone, KL at three. Fair enough. Well, you, you wouldn't you wouldn't still open with Rohit and Jess uh, and Jesswell? Yeah, I mean I could, but like I want Kale at three and I want Verda four. So do you push him down to five? Uh Sarfraz would be better in the foot five, I think, wouldn't he? Is isn't that what he batted last time? Did he? Uh somebody like yeah. three or two. Um uh, I don't think he batted that high. Um I know he obviously went away from the last game and and, and tonked some runs. Um in the in the domestics, um, as as he does, he was like, "So I'm not playing for India this this match uh, against Bangladesh." Let me go and just uh, just remind them how much of a badass I am. Yeah, um, as competitive. Yeah, Rohit Sharma is apparently there's some rumours that he's not going to be he's going to be missing some of the tests in Australia. the last two, I think. Right. So is there a is there a, a maybe a, a a call for an idea to, to blood another opener. Um, I mean, obviously, Ray's Ro- got to play; he's captain. But do we want to open with somebody else in the tests? Uh, one or two of them, or one of the innings, just to give someone else a bit of a go, and warm them up. Yeah, I mean, I probably wouldn't do it in this match. I'd probably, and if this match goes a draw, then I probably wouldn't mix it to too much because these wins are important. Yeah. To- I don't, I, don't, I don't necessarily mean in this game. I just mean between now and South Africa and maybe before we get to Australia is what I meant. Yeah, probably. And the other, I mean, the bigger part is captaincy. What's going to happen there? Who's going to take over the VC? Who's going to take, I would assume, uh, Boomer is going to be the shoe and four captain uh, when Rohit goes out. But where from there, I don't really know. I, I mean, you probably lean Rishabh to be vice captain in that situation. Um, but again, depending on the situation, it wouldn't surprise me if we go into Australia in that series as Boomer Captain Vera Vice. No, I was just about to say that. I think that's probably a better way of going things. <laughs> I think also it's a lot of... Because really, you want... Uh, bowling captains are cool, and as much as it's, it's, it'll be quite rare and quite fun for Cummins and Boomer to be posing with the, with the trophy together and doing all the stuff like you know the captains do, and it's rare that two bowlers are doing it. I think still it's a lot of pressure on a bowler. They've got to handle their, their own themselves um, in a place like Australia, where it's you know it, it, it's a tough place to tour, um, and it will be helpful for Bumrah to have Virat in the slips most likely, um, 
or you know mid off um to help dictate things um and maybe just take a load off him maybe just if he if Bumrah wants to field in the deep Bumrah doesn't want to have to be running in every time do you know what i mean yeah. as, as a fast bowler he needs to be in the deep quite maybe boundary rider or sometimes that's where a lot of a lot of the time fast bowlers are um yeah, so he yeah otherwise he doesn't really want to be in in the middle of the action because that's going to be like very tiring for him if he's then going to carry on with his spell so you want virat somewhere local just to just to help relay relay instructions maybe or um you know uh if they're not relaying instructions to uh to just put an arm around a bowler or whatever you know yeah and i mean it, it is and sledge yeah for sure on paper it makes sense but it wouldn't surprise me if that's a that's a scenario where virat doesn't want it the mm -hmm. captain, because it is sort of, and he'll be pseudo vice captain always. You can't keep Vera out of the conversations. You can't keep Vera out of the match. He's always going to be right in the midst of it. So I don't necessarily think the uh, the title changes much, but it does optically in terms of like the media, the press, and the pressure if he's vice captain there. And given the that Adelaide match, we don't talk about where he did captain, and he left the next three for KL to captain. That we ended up winning those matches and winning the. The series. It wasn't Kale, it was Rahane that won. The oh, Rahane, Jinx, sorry. I was thinking Kale. Um, yeah, Jinx. So I think if, if Virat ends up being in a captaincy role and the series doesn't go according to plan, then I, it would, and Virat doesn't necessarily score, then I think that he's just setting himself up to get slagged off a lot more than if he just didn't perform and he was just uh, uh, the fielder. Um, so yeah, Virat would be fun, but I don't think the title would be necessary and Boomer has the experience and everything where I, it's not critical uh, to have Virat in that vice captaincy role. And I'm, I've always been a big player of, uh, what's it called, building up the youth for having them ready. So mm -hmm. if you told me it was Rishabh, if you told me, like, for the Bangladesh series, if Rohit doesn't play for a match or two, I wouldn't hate Jaiswal getting a look at just to see how he'd react, just to be under that situation, under the gun, under the lights. And a relatively unco inconsequential match. Um, but yeah, Rohit, Rohit is a big loss, but it's one of those things where when you think about it, you have to start acknowledging it, that that era is... Every series that we get out of those, that era of the Virat and Rohit, we're lucky. And like Judd doing... Uh, every match that we get out of them, we should be thankful, and it's not... Yeah, I mean, Judd is the youngest of 35 out of those guys, so... Um, yeah. Uh, but actually, he's only, like, what, um, 30 days younger than Virat, but still. Um, yeah, that there is... Yeah, look, we, we out of... Uh, I think I'm paraphrasing something about the billions of years of existence. I don't know, you might have said this. We exist in a time where, you know, Rohit and, and Virat... You, you did say this, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're lucky so, to um, the same era. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. Um... Well, look, the, the squad looks unchanged, really, from from Bangladesh. I mean, why would you change it? Because you knew you were going to go with those players. Um, so, so yeah, and, and I think what well, I guess the team. Are you still going with three paces in? in I probably wouldn't. Um, not the first match. Um, we have the three spinners: Rainy, Do, Pay. Uh, yeah, I'd probably play three spinners here in this first match. Especially because the ground's going to be wet and you have to land on it and run on it. There's a lot more likely of a chance of one of the quicks getting hurt. Um, and we don't, as of right now, have like this abundance of depth and pace attack. And Rohit even said it, like that's the goal that he wants to leave India Test Cricket with, is a bank of eight or nine quick bowlers that can just step in and fill the role of someone not named Boomerah. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. And right now we don't necessarily have that. So I think it's, it's saved them for when we need them in a match that we can definitively say it's the right move. Here with the weather and everything, uh, just the juice isn't worth the squeeze. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, yeah, the um, the first test is going to have started by the time this, this podcast out. Um, oh, yeah. So second... I, could, I could look like an idiot here any minute now. No, look, we, we don't know. This is conjecture. Um, but the chances are... Look, all we know about the... Uh, the match is that hopefully there will be no rain um, and, and hopefully runs will be scored, wickets will be taken and... Um, By India. Well, yeah, if, if, if New Zealand doesn't score any runs, 
or take any uh, wickets. Then, then, <laughs> what a match. hell of a game! What a match, <laughs> yeah. boys. <laughs> 600 without loss declared uh, in the first innings and then... Um, Won by 600 yeah. innings. <laughs> yeah, well, basically, yes. Yeah. <laughs> because they haven't scored anything in second innings either. Um, so, yeah, look, uh, first first game starts on the 16th of October, second on the 24th of October, so, yeah, and the third one on the 1st of November. So there's very little rest in between um, the test matches. Um, shall we leave it there, Karen? I've got. Do you have any predictions? Any hot takes? I've got two Virat centuries in the next two matches, or in this well, series. In the series, that'd be nice. Um, I'm rubbish at predictions, so I'm not going to say anything. Um, We're getting to that point. I'll, I'd have to start slagging off Virat to sort of get him into gear a little bit, but it, it kills me. I don't know if I have it in me, but it, it tends. I, to- I would. I would like him to bat like he did against Bangladesh. Yeah, um, where he just went crazy and just started slapping stuff like yeah. that would be be great. Um, and I think Rohit will probably carry on along those lines. And actually, on that, um, there is something I blatantly missed. Is Gautam Gambhir? I'm glad you 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 put this up. Gautam Gambhir did has said that if you play one way, you don't grow. So it's it's um, adaptability is 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 important, and that kind of I guess highlights the whole. Sevag ball, that we've called it. Uh, Sevagology is actually how Jared Kimber christened it many years ago, um, before basketball, in fact. Um, and, and, and that's kind of right. You know, in that match, the situation demanded you just slap it silly, um, just go donkey gorilla on it. Whereas in another situation, you've got to grind it out. And that's probably how you're going to be a, a good winning test team as opposed to just slapping it silly all the time. And that's um, Gautam as a player too. He had different he had different uh, gears that he could switch into whenever the match required it. Um, yeah, it's great. That seemed like a little subtle jab at basketball by him, which is fun. Because I'm sure. I, don't care. It, I think it's probably just more just a just a response to a question as opposed to something specific about basketball. But uh, but I, maybe I think that's you probably not want as to fun as my answer. narrative. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's normally the case. Yeah. So if we want, yeah, so the headline for this should be Gautam trashes basketball or mocks really? basketball. Uh, I was gonna, I was gonna go with shut the BCCI down. Yeah, yeah. I guess they're both, they're both pretty, pretty rage invading. Um, yeah, that's the one way. Or we, we can maybe we can add your li- uh, broad's uh, wife and say, God no, no, find better men. No. <laughs> God. I repeat, real man. He's a really nice person. So no. Um, Allegedly. Uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's my judgment. Um, <laughs> She says hello to me, so that, that's that's that, that's what counts. You tell um, me. Say again. Say no. I know. <laughs> I will ask her if she knows current meta. Mm. See if, if it doesn't it's either she says yes or she's lying. Say <laughs> yeah. so yes, that guy. Yeah. Uh, um, but yeah. Right. Let's leave it there. Um, let's see what happens with, with New Zealand um, and India. Hopefully, there'll be no rain in the morning because I've got some meetings um, on Zoom, which I'm happily, I'd happily have with the cricket on in the background. Yeah, for sure. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, that's, that's what it is. Uh, so next episode next week, do not forget to tell your friends about us. We're getting, this is episode six. We're getting into the swing of things. I'd like to say we, we're through our Bangladesh uh, series phase where we've warmed up for the season ahead. Um, and, and now, yeah, we're, we're hopefully hitting our stride. Don't forget, go on all the socials, search Gumble Corner with uh, Ks, both of it. Gumble with a K, obviously, and Corner with a K because we're cool like that. And cool yeah, hit some, you're cool with a K, obviously. Um, but not all together, there's a space between those three Ks. Um, two and one. Um, listen, <laughs> hit subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube and uh, hit follow if you're on a, some kind of podcast app. Catch you later.